Hello, welcome to another video from the Voyager Middle School of Robotics classroom. We're going to be using Autodesk 123D Design today. We're going to be doing the construction tools. Um, specifically, we're going to work on sweep and revolve. So that we'll add that to what we know about law from the vase. And extrude is pretty self-explanatory. It's very familiar if you've used anything like SketchUp before. But we're going to show you how to use these two tools today. And you can re read what they do right here but just by hovering. And those tools we're going to make a teacup. So first, I would recommend using Google Images to make uh, to see what a teacup looks like and pick a teacup design you'd like. We're going to use these sketch tools right here. We have Polyline and Spline. Polyline is for straight lines primarily is what I use it for. You can click and hold and get some curves too. But I think Spline is a much easier, more intuitive way to draw curves. So I'm going to draw the straight lines first. I'm going to choose Polyline. And like with any sketch tool, I'm going to click on the grid to open a new sketch. I'm going to draw the top. I'm going to think about that being the radius of my teacup, not the diameter. I'm going to draw a 90 degree angle so that I can have a nice center line to revolve around and then a nice straight bottom edge too so that I can um, have this teacup sit flat on the ground. Then I'm going to use the spline tool to create something stylish. And the real important part here is to click to edit sketch. Because if I don't click to edit sketch, it won't be a part of this first sketch that I drew. If it's not part of that first sketch, it won't fill in, you won't be able to revolve it, etc. What's really important when you're using the um, spline tool is that you create enough of these points along the line. Uh, click the, because even if I don't like my shape, what I can do is I can come back and I can adjust my shape as, by clicking and dragging these points. But if I don't have enough points, that's hard to do. So let's say this is the shape I like. I'm going to give myself a little rotation here, click on the inside, just like anything in 123 Design. I want to do something with this, I click on it, I get this context menu, and I know that I want to revolve. So the profile is already selected, so I can just switch to axis and click the center axis. So if I've done that correctly, I should get this widget, which allows me to revolve a new shape or cut out a shape or anything like that. I'm going to choose 360 degrees um, to go all the way around, and I'm going to click outside to finish. So now you can see I've got my teacup. It just doesn't have any place to put the tea. So select the teacup, select the top part, and we're going to choose shell. So now I can tell how thick I should make this shell wall, and now I've got a teacup. It just doesn't have a handle. So let's add the handle. Um, one nice thing about 123 design is if when I'm ready to do something like, oops, let's go back to the top here. Top view. When I'm ready to do something like add a handle, if this is in my way and I kind of want it gone, I can always just hide the solids and it'll come back as soon as I choose show solids. So now I'm going to draw in my handle. I'm going to use the uh, spline tool to do so. Um, I'm not going to click to add to this sketch because I want it to be a separate sketch. So I'm going to click out here, but you see that didn't start anything. Um, I'm going to click where I want to start and just make sure that my handle goes all the way to the inside of my teacup. Also make sure that I leave some space on the bottom here so that if I add a thickness to this, it's not going to go below the bottom of the teacup and um, help tip my teacup over. So that's the shape of my handle, but I haven't given it any sort of heft, any sort of cross section. So I can use the sketch tools again, and I can choose any sort of sketch here. I'm going to use an ellipse. And I'm going to draw what, what would this look like if I cut it in half. And again, I want a new sketch, so I'm going to click on the sketch plane. And then I can click and I can draw myself an ellipse by clicking the major axis and then the minor axis and then click the check mark. So this sketch should be separate even though I wrote it right on top. So that means if I take it and I select it and I choose move, I should be able to grab this circle here and rotate it without rotating the other parts. I'm going to go exactly 90 degrees. Um, and I'm going to see right now, it doesn't have to go through the center, but this line has to pass through this shape. If the line does not pass through the shape, the sweep tool will not work. So it's really important that you position your sketch so that the, the path goes through the shape. Uh, this is a difference from the Follow Me tool in SketchUp. I'm going to choose the shape first. I'm going to choose Sweep. And that's the profile I want to move. And I want to choose the path I want to move it along as this path. And it will automatically choose um, New Solid for me because I have the other solid hidden. If you don't have the other solid hidden, it will probably default to Subtract because it assumes you're going to poke holes in this teacup you're going to want to switch that to new solid because you do want this to be a separate solid. Don't worry about how long it is right now. We're going to cut that off later. So now I've got my handle. Um, so let's see how these things go together by showing my solids. And I can see I've got a handle and I've got a teacup and it looks rather nice. Um, I do have a problem though. 
Uh, let's hide these sketches because I'm kind of done with them, but I want to keep them in case I have a big problem. Um, I obviously don't want these parts on the inside, but it has there's no awareness of these two parts that they're intersecting each other or anything like that. So what I can do is I can use the combine tools, and what I really want to do is I want to subtract where this teacup overlaps from the handle so that these get cut off and I can select them easily and delete them. So what I want to do is I want to do something like subtract handle minus cup, click outside. That's perfect, except um, my teacup's gone. So these parts are separate. I could delete them easily, but I also deleted my teacup. So let's undo that, control Z, or you can use these buttons up here. How do I keep my teacup? Well, what I want is two teacups. That way I can lose one. So click on my teacup, I'm going to do control C, control V on the keyboard. Control C for copy, control V for paste. And you can see now it's saying, okay, now you can move around that copy you just placed. I don't want to move it. So I'm just going to click outside here. Now this looks exactly the same except for there's two teacups, one right on top of each other. So when I do subtract, handle minus cup, and the cup disappears, the one underneath is still there. So it looks pretty much the same, but now you can see when I hover that these are all separate pieces. So I'm going to click on these pieces on the inside and press delete. And before I turn this in to get 3D printed, I definitely want to make sure that this is one piece so that they are welded together. So again, I can use the combine tools and choose to merge like so. And now I have a teacup. It's 3D printable. Um, you can use this and loft and sort of extend things and make a whole tea set. You can make saucers and a teapot and a creamer and a sugar. Um, or you could make uh, a lot of different designs sort of iterate in teacups and see you know, which teacup you like the best. So please check out our other videos and I hope that you have enjoyed.